Okay, sorry about that. Um, this lesson is slope, and so uh, I asked, um, what exactly is slope, and what are some ideas? And the kids came up with, you know, rise over run, rise over run. Um, some kids said it was the m in mx plus b. The m in y equals mx plus b. Um, it's all maybe some kids might have said change in x, change in y over change. Um, change in x. Um, little notation, delta y, but this triangle means change in y, and this is change in x. Um, so, the idea, first of all, please remember, we're in the geometry unit, we're on graph paper. So, we're gonna, when we talk about slope between two points, it's, once again, we're on graph paper, um, for now. So, you're gonna take two points, take two points, and you're going to connect with a segment, connect with a segment. And the idea is the slope is the ratio, the ratio of the change of y to the change um, of x. I think it's starting to rain. Anyway, okay. Um, so, for example, if you see that m equals 3, if someone says the slope is 3, you know that if we have a starting point, it means go up 3 and to the right 1. Up 3 to the right 1. That's the change of y as x. So as, as x moves to the, to the right, y is increasing 3. Um, what about if the slope is negative 2? If, if someone says the slope is negative 2, well, first of all, we're going to write the, well, we're going to write both of these as a rational number. Once again, we're taking our integer and we're transforming it into a rational, uh, rational number. And then from the rational number, we can tell the, kind of the change of y with respect to x. So once again, maybe we have some point here. We know we go down to as we go to the right one, down to as we go to the right one. That's the idea. So generally, we're going to keep the negative sign in the numerator. Um, the denominator, we could put in the denominator, um, but once again, as we look at graphs, we're moving from left to right. So the change is always positive. Um, what if it's if a, you know, n equals zero? Well, that's a line that the, the y doesn't change. We're still moving from left to right, but there's no like increase, decrease. It's just staying the same. The last option, the last option is a line that just goes straight up and down. We're not going to talk about that much, but we want to, we refer to the slope as undefined. It's undefined. We're going to get to that. This it's an important thing when we like graph rational functions. When we talk about calculus. This is going to be important. This, this idea. Of, of an undefined slope. But right now in this class, we're kind of just say it's undefined. So we know that for your past classes, we know that given two points, uh, sorry, given two points, and let's call the first point x1, y1, and let's call the second point x2, y2, assuming, you don't have to, assuming that x1 is to the left of x2. So we're starting at x1, and then we're moving to the right, to the next point. Maybe it's above, maybe it's below, maybe it hasn't changed, maybe it's just going straight up, though most of the time it's not really gonna be doing that. And then the formula, the formula for slope is m is equal to y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1. Please remember, these are like our journeys. We plot the point. Remember to find the distance. We want change in x, change in y. That was, those were like the legs of our right triangle on graph paper. The hypotenuse was the distance. But we, even if we don't even need this, we have those journeys, those changes in x, changes in y. That's going to help us find the slope. So let's take some points. How about 1, 3? and three, eight. So find the slope between these two points. You say, no big deal. 
I know that m is equal to um, you know, 8 minus 3 over 3 minus 1, so it's 5 over 2. The slope is 5 over 2. It's positive, 2 and a half. It's increasing. Um, let's take another example. Um, how about the point um, 1, 7 and 4, negative 2? We see here, you know, x is going from 1 to 4, but 7 is going down. From, the y is going from 7 down to negative 2. It's going to be a negative slope. Um, but now we want a number to represent that slope. Um, so we have the slope is equal to negative 2 minus 7 over 4 minus 1, which is negative 9 over 3, which is negative 3. One thing I spoke about in the last class is that it's interesting how, you know, in, in statistics we talk about like qualitative and quantitative. And we do the same thing with slope. We, we either refer to a line as increasing or decreasing. That's qualitative. But quantitative, we actually give a number to it, whether it's like negative 3 or positive 3 or negative 2, 5 over 2 or negative 3 or, or 0. Um, let's try another example. How about, how about this one? So we get a visual um, 5, 2, and 9, 2. Now, we can see the x is changing, but the y is not changing at all. So we know in our head we have a con it's constant. Let's verify that with a number. So we have, let's see, we have two, the slope is 2 minus 2 over 9 minus 5, which is 0 over 4, which, which is 0. And that 0 tells us, sorry, that 0 tells us that it's a constant. Um, last example, let's take a look at, um, let's see, how about this example? How about a, you know, 2, 2 and 2, 8? Now, we can see the y is changing. We're going up, but we're not moving to the left or right. We're going straight up. So we know it's a line that goes straight up. We'll talk about the equation of a line. This equation, x, because all the x's are twos, this equation is x equals 2. We know visually, you know, this is 2, 2, and this is 2, 8. The slope formula, let's see what the slope formula tells us. We have 8 minus 2 over 2 minus 2, or 6 over 0. We don't know how to deal with that yet. Remember, you've been told you can't divide by 0, but what exactly does that mean? Well, we don't know. We'll, figure, we'll talk about that when we do like rational functions with asymptotes, or in calculus, we're going to be seeing 0 in the denominator, but not in ninth grade, not the slope yet. We just say, oh, the slope is undefined. Undefined. But we're going to talk about that in, in later years. Let's move on. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is what I'm asking you to do, what I'm going to ask you to do now is I'm going to go to Desmos. I want you to go to Desmos. Okay. And I want you to put two equations in, in Desmos. The first equation is y equals mx plus b. And I want you to do the second equation of y equals nx plus c. And I want you to move the sliders around. You have two different lines. You know if n, m and n are positive or negative, so either increasing or decreasing respectively. B and C are the y-intercept. We explored that. So I want you to do a little experiment, though, because I want to talk about, um, I want you, what you want, I want you to do is first, I want B not to be equal to C. And then what I want you to do is I want you to manipulate, manip, manipulate M and N so that line one is parallel to line two. So I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. Fool around with Desmos. Once again, keep B and C. They're not equal. And I want you to move M and N so that these lines are parallel. And what do you notice? OK, we're back. What you notice is that um, when, what you should have noticed is that when when m equals n, then the lines are parallel. So once again, if two lines are parallel, then their then their their slopes are equal. 
Now, that's actually a theorem, and it actually goes both ways. If the slopes are equal, the lines are parallel. If the lines are parallel, then the slopes are equal. So that's the first thing. The next thing, let's talk about another relationship with the slopes. I asked the class, what, um, what is another relationship between lines? And you should say, hopefully you say, Mr. Adler, lines can be perpendicular. So let's explore that one. Let's see. Perpendicular, perpendicular. It means, what's the definition of perpendicular? Two lines or segments or rays that meet at a 90 degree angle. So two, we can say like lines, set, uh, segments, rays uh, that intersect at 90 degrees. So what I want you to do now is, first of all, next to the y equals mx plus v, there should be like a red circle. I want you to click on that so it goes away. And so you're just left with y equals mx plus c. Next, I want you to go to the third line in your intesimals, or geogebra, if you recall, and I want you to put the equation y equals 2x plus 3. Now what I want you to do, so when we know from our sketching, we know it kind of looks like this, and you should see it in Desmos. What I want you to do is manipulate n so that it's perpendicular to this, this new line. So this is y equals nx plus c. I want you to manipulate n so that it's perpendicular to the line. Um, what do you notice? Take, take a couple seconds, figure it out. Okay, we're back. Well, what you notice is that n is equal to either negative 0.5 or negative a half. You say, hmm, it's kind of connected. Let's try another example. So let's take out y equals 2x plus 3, and let's put in the line y equals negative 1 third x, I don't know, minus 2. So we have the new line in here. It kind of looks like this because it's decreasing, and the y-intercept is negative 2. It's, not, it's just a sketch. Now I want you to manipulate n so that the y equals nx plus c is perpendicular to this line. Manipulate your n. What, do you, what does n become? I'll walk away. Pause the video. Okay, we're back. What you should have discovered is that the perpendicular line to y equals negative one-third n, n is equal to three. And what you discover is that um, the, what, what is the relationship between 2 and negative 1 half, or negative 1 half and 3? Perpendicular slopes are the negative reciprocals of each other. So perpendicular slopes are the negative reciprocals, the reciprocals of each other. And the rule is to get to get the perpendicular slope, you take your number, you take your slope, you flip it, and you negate it. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so flip it, flip it, and negate. So let's do some examples. So for example, if I have five, how do I get the so It's like find the perpendicular slope. So I take five, one fifth, and then it's negative one fifth. Uh, what about like two thirds? How about negative two thirds? Well, you flip it, and then you flip, flip the sign. And that's how you find the perpendicular slope. Um, let's see, one last thing. One last thing, or, or, um, they also, if two slopes are perpendicular, their product is negative one. Or if two slopes are perpendicular, then their product is negative one. Okay, last thing. I'll say here before I ask you three questions, and then we're good to go. So, the last thing I want to talk about is collinearity. Collinearity. What does it mean that three points are collinear? 
Yeah, it means they're on the same line. The points that are on the same line. Well, the great thing about lines is that the slope between any two points is constant. So the slope between any two points on a line is constant. How are we doing for time? We're good. So, for example, let's go back to day one when we had the equation y equals 2x plus 1 and we created the chart like back in like 7th to 8th grade. So we have x and y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Remember on day one, I asked you to figure out the y value. So take the negative 2, plug it in the equation, and we got my y value. So this was negative three, this is negative one, this is one, and you said, well, I see a pattern in this rather. The pattern ended up being the slope. And so we were like three and then five. Now my, my statement, let's, see, let's call these points A, B, C, D, and E. I claim, I believe, I'll tell you that the slope between any two points is constant. So for example, let's say you pick the slope between A and E, and you said, okay, so the change, let's see, the change from negative three to five is eight, and the change from negative two to two is four, the slope is two. Pick another two points. How about the slope from D to B? How about the slope from D to B? Okay, well, what's the change in Y? Three to negative one is negative four. 1 to negative 1 is negative 2. This also ends up being 2. So, it's a way to find if two points are collinear, but given three points. So, um, if A, B, and C are collinear, sorry, 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 collinear, then find the slope of AB, find the journey from A to B, and when you're at B, find the journey from A to C, from B to C, or the slope from B to C. And if they're equal, then the points are collinear. That's it. And it's kind of like what we do, like with the midpoint formula, or how we solve those midpoint formulas. Like I gave you, like if I gave you segment AB, and I told you, a is here, and the midpoint is here, find point B. You said, fine, the journey from A to the midpoint is equal to the journey from the midpoint to the other endpoint. And that's the same idea here with collinearity. Let's do some examples, and then I'll let you do some work. So, let's see, example one. Example one. Um, we have two points. Two, let's call this point A, it's two, five. And point B is 5B. And I'm telling you that segment AB is parallel to y equals 3x minus 2. Find B. So I'll put it on pause and see what you can do with this. Okay, we're back. So, once again, we know if two segments or a line or a segment is, is parallel, their slopes are equal. So, what is the slope of AB? You say, fine. B minus 5 over 5 minus 2 is B minus 5 over 3. Well, we know that this slope is equal to that slope. That's equal to 3. B minus 5 equals 9. B equals 14. I feel like I made a mistake, but I could be wrong. Tell me if I made it. Yeah. I think I made it. No, this is good. B minus five, five minus two. Okay. Example number two. Example number two. That's this point C, which is one three, and point D, which is four D. And I know it's perpendicular to y equals negative three x plus three. Find D. Okay. Put it on pause and try to figure it out on your own. Okay, we're back. So um, we know the slope is the slope of CD is equal to D minus three over four minus one, which is 
sorry, which is d minus 3 over 3. The question is, what is it equal to? Well, if it's perpendicular to a line whose slope is y equals negative 3x, or the slope is negative 3, to find the perpendicular slope, we take the negative 3, flip it, and negate. So, this is equal to one third. Now, some people might say, oh, we'll cross multiply, Mr. Rather. A little trick, if the denominators are the same, then the numerators are the same. So all we can do is d minus three equals one, d equals four. One last problem. Um, question is, um, are these three points collinear? So let's see about that. Let's see if these three points are collinear. So the first point, so let's see, um, let's see, if A is, well, let's call these, let's call it E, F, and J. Let's see, E is 2, 5, and point F, this is question 3, E, F, F, I'm sorry, F is 4, 9, and point G is um, 6, 13. I want to know if these three points are on the line. Now, some of you might say, you know what? I'm just going to stick it in the table and see how X changes and Y changes. And you might say just by inspection, you know, Miss Rather, 2, 2, and this is going 4, 4. So it is collinear. Let's, let's formalize it with an equation. The slope of EF is 9 minus 5 over 4 minus 2, which is 4 over 2 or 2. And then start at F and take your journey to G. Do I, am I also going in the same direction? Let's see. 13 minus 9 over 6 minus 4 is 4 over 2 is 2. Nice. Because the slope of EF is equal to the slope of FG, so because they are equal, these points are collinear. Collinear. Did it fit in there? Can you see it? Yeah. Excellent. Try the homework.